So here's the question we want to answer today. Why can't we kill a virus? Okay. Well, it's because viruses are not alive in the first place. They're a piece of genetic material, very mysterious, wrapped in a sack, and they invade our body. They go into uh, our cells and they latch on to the machinery of our cells, usually the DNA, and they start to use our own body's energy to replicate. So you really can't kill a virus because it doesn't really have a life force. But you can definitely acquire a virus, get sick, and then once your body deals with that uh, virus, it doesn't necessarily kill it again because it's not alive, it goes in remission. It goes in a dormant stage. And that's called a latent virus. And that's what I want to talk about. So many of you watching uh, probably had a virus infection in the past. Um, that virus is still in your body. It might come out as herpes, like a, in a canker sore in your mouth or a cold sore in your mouth. Type 1 herpes is in the mouth or the tongue. Type 2 is in the genitals. And it really tends to hang out in the nerves. So here you have this infection. Your, your immune system deals with it. It goes into remission. And it just sits there and it waits. And it waits. And it waits until you're run down, you're stressed out, and you're tired, and you're sick, and you're nutritionally deficient. And then it comes out and gets reactivated. Um, you have Epstein-Barr virus. Uh, a lot of people had that as a, uh, a teenager. Uh, that can be reactivated later in life from stress. And you may not necessarily even pull on the full infection. It could just make you chronically fatigued uh, because you're going through a stress event, whatnot. Uh, chemotherapy can activate Epstein-Barr viruses. Radiation can activate Epstein-Barr virus. Then you have human papilloma virus. 90% of the population has this virus in their body, and that can be reactivated through stress. And when I talk about stress, it could be mental stress, it could be a loss, it could be physical stress. Then you have another virus called the cytomegalovirus, which can be reactivated, if it's in a dormant stage, from inflammation. This is why um, if you have colitis or inflammation of your colon, that can reactivate this virus. Now, the problem with this virus, it can lead to cervical cancer. Uh, Chickenpox virus can be reactivated at, as herpes zoster or shingles. So you can see a lot of viruses just sitting there as a potential problem. But you're going to be fine as long as you don't ever experience stress anymore or nutritional deficiencies. And then you're going to be good to go. I just want to talk about three really important nutrients that help suppress viruses. These are the three nutrients that are probably the most antiviral of any of the nutrients out there. And vitamin D is at the top of the list. Now, the microbes in TB, which is a bacteria, and this is a virus, Epstein-Barr virus, and the HIV virus, what they do, they have a strategy, they decrease the receptor for your vitamin D, called the vitamin D receptor. In other words, if this is the receptor right here for vitamin D, they will somehow block this so you don't get vitamin D. So you're going to be vitamin D deficient, and then these things will survive. This is kind of a survival mechanism by these pathogens right here. So if you have these infections, okay, it's very important to have enough vitamin D. Um, and I've done tons of videos on this. I put some links down below. Um, it's very difficult to get vitamin D from the diet, and it's very difficult to get vitamin D from the sun if it's the winter time. So uh, it's important to make sure you get enough. Um, also, vitamin D decreases the risk of cervical cancer. Okay, I talked about that right here. And the reason for that is that vitamin D helps suppress the virus that can trigger the cancer. Let me go back here. Vitamin D can also decrease the risk of influenza, the flu virus, okay? And also respiratory infections. It can help um, protect you and almost bulletproof yourself against respiratory infections. Zinc is the next most important uh, mineral to talk about in relationship to viruses because it can decrease the frequency of that virus getting reactivated, the duration of the time that it is in activation, and it can also decrease the severity of the symptoms especially with herpes and shingles, which is along the nerve roots. And 
If you have shingles, it's very important to also take uh, uh, zinc oxide topically. You can put it right on lesions and really decrease the pain. And the third one is selenium. Very, very important. Uh, if you're deficient, you, you get a lot more viral reactivation than if you had enough. All right, thanks for watching. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.